Hello again and welcome back. Now it's more wiring and electrics that's what this update is going to be about. It is getting there slowly but uh, I have to admit off the bat I haven't been down here as much. It's been my birthday, I have had work, I've this last week's just been a bit, a bit crazy. So yeah I haven't got that much done. Hopefully this week I'm going to get more done. I keep saying about another video being Thursdays or Fridays, but yeah, every time I keep saying that, something else comes up. So cross my fingers, hopefully this week, get some more work done, get another video out. Or failing that, Monday next week, same thing, another update to some degree. Okay, so I'm using these, I believe they're called crimp blade splicers. Now I could be wrong, I saw another YouTuber using them, but they are quite effective. You see the main bus wire goes through there, and then you use these connectors here to go in the back. And they then you connect, obviously you drop wires from the track to those ones. And then yeah, they all just fit together. You'll see in my next video um, of how they actually work. But yeah, this is the technique I've been using. I used them in my last model and, well, my last train set, and they worked quite well. And that's why I've gone with them again. Okay. Last week I was doing the base wiring, telling you about uh, putting them through the battenings and holding them in place. And as you can see there, but these are those crimp blade splices I was saying about, and yeah, they've uh, gone on like a treat. I haven't gone with uh, different colours, they are, as you can see, the same, the blue and in that sky blue connector. But as you can see here, I've definitely used uh, the negative and positive sort of colour coding just to make life easier with the uh, the dropper wires coming down from the track. So my idea now is to solder them all up and make sure they all work and uh, yeah continue on bit by bit go along the board connecting them up which isn't easy by the way you probably can get larger crimp blades these are just the ones I've got at the time but if they carry on to be as difficult I might look for another source or some sort of uh, clamp but a handheld, but you'd need something maybe to sort of crush them down to really clamp them onto those wires. But um, like I say, they might come in other sizes. Maybe I've just been a fool and got them a little too small maybe. But either way, they work. They're nice and tight, nice and firm on there. The wires inside of them are, are holding nice and tight. So yeah, I'd, uh, I'd say it's working. I'm yet to... Uh, unfortunately get actually power going to the track. I've not yet put the shelf in place. You may see the others further down the board there. So yeah, it's all taking a bit of time that I've not actually got. But um, yeah, hopefully by next week I'll have another update for you. I also need to install the point motors. I have them all in a box. They're all wired, ready to go. They just need to be installed and then you know, wires joint up. I've got the switches as well. Um, those discharge units, they're here. So everything should be fine. Hopefully by next Monday, I'll have this all done, all wired in, all of these here, all these wires all connected and hopefully power going to some track, if not all of the track. It's taking a lot longer than I expected, but, um, yeah, it will hopefully be worth it. If I take my time, get them all right, hopefully I won't have to get back down here. It'd be annoying if I make a mistake and yeah, but we'll see. Fingers are crossed and all that lot. I am gonna carry on with these crimp blades going around the bus wire. And yeah, hopefully at least get a loop. <laughs> okay, this is only a small thing but I've been afraid to open this box because I remember what's in it. And unfortunately, it all has to be done. And that is reinstall point motors and those discharge units as well. They're all in there. I kept them as together as possible when taking apart the old, the old train set. But yeah, they are fiddly, pain in the backside to do. And yeah, they aren't going to be the easiest. Especially untangling it all, oh, crikey. Whose idea was it to put them all in the same box? It wasn't mine, I swear. 
But yes, I have all these point motors to install. Get those discharge units. I wonder if I can pull one out. It's not one to look that easy. But uh, these discharge units, oh, I'm taking everything else with me. These discharge units will be perfect here for these points that are going to be all together. Have them somewhere underneath the board where nothing else needs to sit. Maybe slightly further back or over where a station platform is going to be. But have them positioned somewhere. For those that don't know, I mean I'm not a tech genius, but they are just basically batteries. The power powers them up, saves it, and then when you go to use multiple points at the same time, let's say you're flicking these two here, yeah, instant power with no problem. You probably don't even need them, but it was recommended, so I went with it. So hopefully when this is all actually wired up, and as long as everything goes according to plan, yeah, it's, it's going to work nicely without without fault, without problems, but uh, we'll see. As you can imagine, there is a lot of work to be done, a lot of wiring, connections, and as and when it is working, yeah, yeah a lot of demand really, especially if you are operating multiple trains back and forth in this area. But the same goes for the rest of it, you know, flicking this point here, this one might as well, you know, sort of be on the same connection. The only reason you may not flick this one is if you're bringing the loco in here just to stay here, let's say a DMU sits in this siding, well, connection, but anyway. The other one, I, since I have two discharge units, the other one would be best sitting, sitting actually around there, in between those and those. So yes, yeah, so though they can all connect to them, but uh, yeah, time will tell, we will see. Um, I'll give you a quick little scan of the room of how it's looking but uh we have the typical typical loop this will be the city station it's looking quite good if i am honest Carmarthen countryside and then Aberystwyth where the typewriter is so yeah and as you can see outside it's it looks nice but i can tell you it's horrible but um yeah it um uh, it's all looking good if i'm honest I just wish uh, the electrics were coming along quicker than what they are. I could easily wire up these front ones and at least have something shunting up and down, but uh, I'd rather focus my time on getting the rest actually done than playing around. You know, it's nice seeing a loco up and running, and as a, as you know, I've already got that DMU, but yeah, I don't want to just uh, focus on you know having a bit of fun. I want to get it all done so that I can actually get the entire train set up and running and yeah now that we're up here actually you'll see what I mean about that shelf I can either put the shelf in down here which fine it's going to work but narrow access that's just a table I can move across but uh, yeah the shelf can either sit in here and then you are just operating everything back and forth the shelf can either be by the station naturally but yeah, if you have it drop down lower, you know, is it going to be convenient? Or the place I'm thinking is where I was the other day in the other video, underneath this corner, here on the end, somewhere. So yeah, I'm unsure, because as you can see, there's a lot of space here to move around in, in this corner. You might not look it, but there is. Um, so yeah, I am, I'm unsure where to put the shelf. There's no need for there to be real focus on that end because it's, it's just nothing going to be going on. It's going to be just a train going round and back. But um, here where the station is, that's where you want to keep your eye on everything. So that's where surely you want the controller. I have got the controller actually just here. Oh, I'm on. The Gauge Master Progeny 2, I believe it's called, or the Progeny Advance 2. And as you can see, yeah. The dropper wires from the last model are also here with a bit of the bus wiring that I've clearly cut off. Um, that's the base unit, I believe. And there's also my old DC gauge master unit underneath, which I will use for lighting and point motors and stuff. But yeah, I've kept it all together. There are two wireless controllers. Well, I say wireless, they, I think they have to be wired to work, but you get the idea. They're mobile. 
Thanks for watching guys, this has been cut short, I've been cropping and cutting out a lot in the editing section and yeah, just to make it all fit nicely. Uh, and there was so much more waffling than I've actually done. I had about 30 minutes worth that I needed to just crunch right down because as much as you might enjoy a cup of tea and listening to me in the background, treat it like a podcast I guess, it was all a load of tripe that needed editing out really. So yeah. Sorry, again, it's a small update. Hopefully next week I'll have some serious progress to show you. But yeah, I'd like to get trains running, but a bit of pipe dream really, unless I put the hours in. So yeah. Anyway, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.